hello, internet students. See, you're just like my regular students, except you only know me as a video packet transferred over the internet. Welcome back to the Arduino Basics tutorial series. This is lesson number 12, where we're gonna control a servo motor using buttons. So for our wiring diagram, we're gonna start off by bringing in our servo motor, just like the last lesson, and we're gonna wire this up to our board. We'll connect the bottom pin to ground, We'll connect the middle pin to voltage and we'll connect the top pin to our Arduino. For this video, we're going to connect it to pin number three. So you can see the top pin of our servo is going into pin number three, the middle is going to the voltage row and the bottom is going to the ground row on our Arduino. So that wires up our servo. Now we've got to bring in our two buttons and we're going to wire those up as well. So I brought in two buttons and I'm using them to bridge the gap on the Arduino, which is important. I'm also going to need two 10 kilo ohm resistors. Those are going to come from the upper left legs into the ground channel. So those are a 10 kilo ohm resistor coming out of the top left hand leg of each button into the ground channel. The top right hand leg is going to get run to the voltage row. So our buttons top right leg is going to voltage, top left leg is running through a 10 kilo ohm resistor into the ground channel. Next, we're going to connect the lower left hand leg of the button to our Arduino board. For this video, we're going to use pins number four and seven. Let's just review our wiring quickly. Our servo motor is wired to pin number three on our board to the voltage and to the ground row. Each button has a top right hand leg running through to the voltage row, the top left hand leg running through a 10 kilo ohm resistor into the ground row, and the lower left hand leg running to the Arduino. We're using pin number four for the right hand button and pin number seven for the left hand button. And that's all we need for our wiring diagram. Now let's head over into the code and start working on setting up our buttons to control our servo motor. So here we are in our code. I've got a new file called lesson 12 and I just put a quick comment at the top. We're going to use buttons to control a servo motor. So like in the last lesson, we're going to need the library for our servo motor. So we'll do a hashtag include triangular bracket servo.h and we'll bring that servo library in. Remember, you can also bring in the library here from the libraries tab or by downloading the zip file onto your computer. Now that we've included the servo motor, we need to declare our button pins. So I've declared two variables. One of them is called button pin, it's equal to four. One of them is called button two pin and it's equal to seven. And those are gonna be the pins in which I've plugged in both of my right hand and my left hand buttons. Next, we can take this code right from lesson number 11, but we need to set up our servo pin and our servo object. We're also going to create a variable for the initial position of the servo. So we've set our servo pin to three, which is where our servo is plugged in. We've created a new servo object called servo one, and we set the initial servo position to zero, which is the variable servo position. So this is our code that we're going to need to run when this thing first gets pushed out to the Arduino. Now let's go into the setup function and let's make sure we set up our servo motor. All right, so I've done a servo1.attach and we've attached the servo pin. This tells the servo1 object that it can find a servo using pin number three. We've also done a servo.1.write, the servo position, which is gonna make sure that no matter where the servo was, it's gonna reset it back to an initial position of zero. Then I set up our serial monitor in case we need it in our code. That's all the code we're going to need in our setup function. Now we need to start working with looking at the buttons, whether or not they're pressed or not pressed, and what we want the servo to do as a result. So in our loop function, we need to regularly be checking whether or not the buttons are pressed or not. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a variable to hold the button state at this point in my loop. Two variables, button state and button to state. And their values are going to come from a digital read call on those pins. So the pin tells me that the button is pressed or not pressed and sets this integer accordingly. Okay, so we're going to start there. And those values will either be high or low, depending on whether or not it's actually on, pressed or not pressed. So the next thing we need to do is use an if statement to determine whether or not the button is pressed or not. So we'll do one for each button. So we've created an if and an else if statement. If button state is high, so that's the first button, so if button one is on, and then an else if button two is on. So either the first one's on or the second one's on. That's the situation we've set up, okay? 
The way it's currently coded, if both were pressed, it's only gonna worry about button one being pressed. So we need to consider what do we want to happen when the button's being pressed? Well, the goal of this is supposed to be when button one's pressed, the servo kind of moves one way, clockwise or counterclockwise. And then when button two's pressed, it moves back the other way. As long as we're holding on the button, we want it to kind of move one way or the other. So remember this loop function is getting called over and over. So we don't need to try to make the full sweep every time you touch the button, but as long as you're holding it down, it should be moving in small increments. For example, we could write our current servo position and then let's change that variable. Cause remember we started it at zero. It doesn't have to stay at zero the entire time. We could, for example, increment it by one by doing a servo position plus plus. So this writes the position to the servo and then adds one to servo position. So the next time the code would loop, if that button's still pressed down, it's gonna write that and then it's gonna increment again. And it's gonna continue that process. So the longer I hold it down, it should move my servo motor in that direction. Now, it's important that we put a delay in here, maybe just five milliseconds, because if we don't have a delay, it's gonna almost stagger. It can't handle moving that quickly. So we need to make sure that we allow it time to actually move because it's a mechanical device. So we added a delay of five milliseconds. So let's take this code and let's just make some tweaks to it because we want the other button to take us in the opposite direction. So instead of adding one to the position value, we're gonna subtract one from the position value. So inside the button to if statement, so if the second button's pressed, we write the current position, we subtract one from the current position, and then we delay by five milliseconds. So this code should allow when one button's pressed, it to sweep one way, when the other button's pressed, it to sweep the other. Excellent. Remember, that inside the servo motor are gears that are actually turning mechanically as a result of the code that we've written. Well, remember from the last lesson that a servo motor has a range from zero to 180 degrees. The way this code is currently written, if somebody holds down that button, they can take that number of servo position well past 180 or well below zero. And as a result of that, the servo is gonna try to go there, but it's not possible mechanically for the servo to go below zero or above 180. So the gears are just gonna grind. And what's gonna happen is your cheap little servo motor is gonna die. The gears are not gonna work anymore. So we wanna make sure that we prevent things like that. So as an example, we can do what's called a compound if statement, where instead of it just checking one thing, it's gonna check multiple conditions. So we're gonna check if the first button is turned on and we're gonna check if the value is under 180. So let's add that into our code. So I've added in the and, which is double ampersand, which is above the seven key on your keyboard, and and, servo position is less than 180. So it's only gonna run the code in this if statement if both the first button's pressed and my current position is under 180. If it's not, it's just gonna skip that. So I can hold down the button as long as I want, it's never gonna bring servo position past 180, which is good, because that's what I want. I don't want my servo to try to write values beyond 180. So we could do something similar here. We don't want it to go below zero. So let's add a second piece to this if statement. So we've added in and, so button two is being pressed and our position is greater than or equal to zero. So as long as that's the case, we're allowed to go down by one. That's okay. So else if we're over zero and button two is on. So now we have a setup that's gonna allow it to go, but without allowing us to strip our gears out, which we want to avoid at all costs. Let's push it out to the Arduino and let's see how it works. So I'll just put my motor here and I'll press the button. And then if I press the other button and I'm holding that button down, but notice how the servo is not clicking. It's not trying to move. I go the other way and then go back and I can control my servo by pressing on my two buttons. So this is the very beginning of what a controller can do when we can write code for it and we can take that code and use it to control something that's mechanical and electronic. So it allows the electronic communication, but then drives mechanical forces like a car or a robot or whatever else that we wanna create in that physical engineering world, but we wanna write the code to control those devices. So this is kind of the very, very beginnings of that style uh, of programming that people do. I hope you had success with the lesson. Let's have a look at what we can do to extend on our knowledge from this one. So great job with the base lesson. To extend on this, I just wanna try two things for me. The first, I want you to get it to move slower while the button is being pressed. I felt like it moved fairly quickly. Let's make the sweep a little bit slower. So while the button's being held down, play with the speed a little bit, okay? 
For a second one, I want you to use that serial monitor that we created. And let's print out the position that the servo motor is currently in to the screen. Okay, that would be creating a virtual interface where we're also controlling that along with the mechanical. So it just prints out the current position, so like a zero to 180 as it's changing onto the serial monitor. So do those two things just to extend on what we did in the lesson, make sure you understood it a little bit. Hopefully the extension went well. For the challenge this time around, I want you to add one more feature and it's gonna involve playing around with your if statement structure a little bit. Remember I said early in the lesson that right now, if you press both buttons at the same time, it's gonna ignore button two and it's only gonna do what button one says. And it's good that it's not trying to deal both because that's gonna stutter your servo. That's not gonna work well. But here's what I want you to do. If somebody presses both buttons at the same time, I want your servo to snap back to zero and then wait two seconds before it responds to input again. So let me just show you how that would work. So here's my servo. You can see that it works the same way as it did before where I press buttons and it moves. If I press both buttons at the same time, it snaps back to zero and it ignores button presses for two seconds. So no matter where my servo is, if I press both, it snaps it back to zero and then waits two seconds before it accepts input again. So that's what we're gonna to try to do with the challenge. You're gonna to need to play around with your if statements a little bit and that compound, that and, okay, because we're gonna need both buttons to be on. All right, so you'll have to think about structure and how to lay it out, but that's why it's in the challenge section. So good luck with that, and we'll see you back here for lesson number 13 of the Arduino Basics tutorial series. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like what we're doing here, subscribe to the channel, like the video, let us know in the comments. Have a great day.